Hey guys, it's GED question of the daytime. And today I'm asking you to name the inverse of each operation. So let's translate my language a bit first. What is an operation? Well, operations are the things that we do in math that we do with our numbers. Like we add our numbers. Addition is an operation. We subtract them. We multiply. We divide them. That type of a thing. Now I'm asking you to look at these operations and name the inverse of them. What is the inverse? Think of the inverse like the opposite or moving backwards. I'll give you a great example. When you very, very first learned addition, way back in like first, second grade, your teacher gave, these, gave you these problems like Johnny has two candies and Jimmy has five candies. How many total candies do, does, do the boys have? And you would know, oh, that's addition. So when I was putting together the groups, it was addition. But then soon after that, you learned to work that same problem backwards to start with what would have been the answer. And instead of putting together groups to do the opposite, to take out a group, to remove a group, say remove a group of five. And that would get you right back to the start to just Johnny's candies. Like if you took the total seven candies and removed Jimmy's five candies, you'd be left with Johnny's two candies. Same kind of an idea. It's like the same movement, but it's going backwards or forward. So you can put numbers together through addition. You could take a group away through subtraction. And those two are inverses. So uh, A, the inverse of subtraction is addition. I said that funny, addition. And the inverse of addition is subtraction. Kind of like if the opposite of black is white, then the opposite of white is black. Okay, so then a little later in math, you learned um, this idea of repeated uh, addition, like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 could be expressed another way. Um, you could be putting together two uh, groups of 2 four times or 2 times 4. So you learned how to, this kind of like re idea of repeated addition being expressed as multiplication. And you know, and you memorized, oh, 2 times 4 is equal to 8. But then eventually you got to the point where you wanted to undo that work. You wanted to be able to do the inverse of the work. You wanted to be able to come back from the answer, break it into that many groups, and see how many there were per group. And you learned to divide. So the opposite of multiplication is division. The inverse of multiplication is division. And of course, likewise, if the, op if the inverse of multiplication is division, the inverse of division must be multiplication. So we're almost done. But I just really wanted to talk about the inverse of squaring. By the way, guys, there's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm not just doing this for the sheer joy of learning invoice inverses. Um, algebra, <laughs> your algebra skills hinge on your ability to determine an inverse. Um, a lot of algebra is the ability to move backwards uh, uh, to undo things, to undo things. And so I also want to know the inverse of squaring. So maybe you don't know what I'm talking about when I say squaring. So squaring, first of all, is a little floating two. That right there is, you could read a seven to the second power, but you can also read it as seven squared. Squaring a number is raising it to the second power. And as I hope most of you know, a good picture of that is to draw a square. A square that is seven by seven. Now, if a square is seven units by seven units, it would end up with an area of seven by seven or seven times seven, 49 square units. And so to square a number is like to make a square that's seven by seven or 49 square units. Okay, so seven squared is 49. Now what's the opposite of that? How do you undo that? How can you get back from what would have been the answer, 49, uh, to that number, seven? Well, the opposite of squaring is what we call square rooting. It looks like that little check mark house. We call those radicals. And the square root of 49 is asking if you have these 49 little unit squares making up a square, how long is a side length? It's just seven. So the opposite of squaring is square rooting. 
And guys, this is the one students forget most often. And by the way, the GED knows that there's a ton of algebra problems where this comes up. It comes up in the Pythagorean theorem. It comes up in uh, those geometry problems where they ask you to work backwards and find the radius when you've been given the volume of a cylinder. Um, it happens all over the GED. So super important you understand that the opposite of squaring is square rooting. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, uh, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.